Hello, another video about microcontrollers. So this is an STM32, also known as Blue Pill, which is the, the contendent for the Arduino Nano. It has almost the same form factor of the Arduino Nano, it's a bit wider, and it has some features that, in my opinion, are better than the ones of the Arduino Nano. So first of all, the USB connection is a micro USB, much more common than the kind of USB used in the Arduino Nano. So all the smartphone chargers, things like that, are these, so you will have a lot around in your home. Then you have the MCU, the processor, which runs at a frequency of 72 megahertz, much faster than the 8, I think it's 8 megahertz of the Arduino, or 16. I has it 16. The 5 volts Arduinos can run at 16, then there is some downgraded version of Arduino at 3.3 volts that can only run at, at uh, 8 megahertz. Here there is the crystal oscillator, it says 8. I don't know how does it work. It's possible that the base clock frequency is 8 megahertz and then you multiply 8 by 9, it gives the 72 megahertz of the CPU. I don't know. Here you have an RTC. If I'm not wrong, this blue thing is an RTC, so real-time clock. And then you have the, all the common digital and analog pins, like in an Arduino. Nano on Arduino Uno. There is one major difference between this and the Arduino. Oh, I forgot another advantage, it's 32-bit. So it's not an 8-bit, it has four times more precision in the architecture of the MCU. So if you are using floats, double precision in your calculations, you will get different results with this because this is more precise than the Arduino. So what's the main difference in the layout of the board? This doesn't have a serial to USB converter. It means you cannot program directly plugging it to your computer unless you burn a bootloader on it. So this is the first thing to do in my opinion if you want to do a lot of projects with it unless you already have the project working and you just buy blue pills and you burn on it using a serial to USB, com external serial to USB converter. So like this, you don't really need a bootloader. So what to do to burn a bootloader on this microcontroller? You need to change this jumper, the boot zero from zero to one, like this. Then you plug it to your computer using, I think it's the pins A10 and A11. You have to check the schematics in the internet. These are the two transmitter and receiver serial pins. So you use some kind of uh, serial to USB converter like the Prolific or the same one used in an Arduino. Or if you already have an Arduino, you can use the Arduino as a serial to USB converter. So you plug the RT, uh, uh, T, no, TX and RX pins of the Arduino to these two pins here. And make sure that you connect the RX of the Arduino to the TX of this, because here where it is transmitting is receiving in the other device. And then you plug the Arduino with the USB, and then you will be using the USB converting embedded on the Arduino to communicate with the blue pill. Then what you need is to go to the ST uh, electronics webpage and download the drivers for your computer to communicate with this board. After you have the drivers, you will need the bootloader software and you will need to download the, the binary bootloader file and pay attention to this here. You see for me it's PC13. This is the LED to which pin it's connected. So in my case it's wired to the PC13. This is a hardwired, so it depends on hardware, so you need to look at your PCB and download the, the binary accordingly. Otherwise, uh, the LED will not blink correctly. Mm, I think most of the boards are PC13 lately, but in any way, you need to check. And once you have connected and set the serial communication and you succeeded to burn the bootloader, you need to unplug it put this jumper back to the position zero, and then you can just boot it by plugging a micro USB here to your computer, and it will boot by using the bootloader. Then you can, um, you can program it using the interface Arduino INE, 
but you will need to install the libraries for the STM32, the, the version of the blue pill, and you will need to select the proper like CPU frequencies and everything. And then you will see that you also have some compiling options, like uh, if you want to prioritize a fast code, or rather a slow code, or debugging mode, etc. And uh, this is all for this video. I already have a project that I did with it. If you look uh, behind in my publication list, you will see I built a diving computer using an analog computing paradigm. And I plan to do some other projects with this, taking advantage of the 12-bit resolution in the analog inputs and also the higher computing power of this MCU. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye.